in miserable weather like this at Lyme Regis, it's good to go fossil collecting at low tide. Let's show you the fossils that we're looking for on the beaches. Well, it's February half term week at Lyme Regis and I hope you've been finding some fossil finds during this rough, windy weather on the beaches. The sea doing the work for you, washing the fossils out. And I'm gonna show you the fossil finds that you can make along this Jurassic coastline. It's absolutely miserable weather, as you can see there in the background, there's Lyme Regis Marine Parade with people walking along. I don't fancy going out collecting. If you do get to go fossil collecting along the Jurassic coast, I hope you get out at low tide and find one of the smaller ammonites. This is a large one here, fossilized in limestone in the wall. You can see the chambers of the creature there, filled with limestone. Here's a really good map of the Jurassic coast. You can see along the Marine Parade, showing you just where you are in relation to Lyme Regis and the Jurassic coast. And there are two beaches you can attend, the beach to the west or the beach through to the east. Here is Lyme Regis and you can head out through to the west looking for fossils or through towards the east and Black Ven and then on to Charmouth. I'm just down at the historic Cobb looking at the boats. So when I get back, I'm gonna show you the fossils you can find along the Jurassic coast. Everyone's been showing me these guards of the sea creature, the Balamnite there. You can see the tail end there of that sea creature that's been found along the Jurassic coast. Got some nice ammonites in the background there too to show you. These are the fossils from the low tide areas in iron pyrite, fool's gold on the beach. You'll see that's quite prevalent in patches where the sea is scoured out. That's good to look for to find the fossils in the iron pyrite. That's how small the little perfect pyrite ammonites can be on the Jurassic coast. Really tiny ammonites there that you can find along the beach. At the ichthyosaur vertebrae there, the backbones of the ichthyosaur, a bit of paddle bone too there from an ichthyosaur. And a rarer find here, a bit of the ichthyosaur jaw with the gnarled teeth there in that jaw and some bone there. The attrition of the sand and sea has ground down that bone. Nice piece of paddle bone there. You can see the sea creatures that have clung to it. It's been found at low tide. Other marine reptile finds. Here's a nice chunky plesiosaur backbone, a vertebra from that sea creature, that ancient marine sea creature. Also two from the ichthyosaur, a coprolite. You can see those fish scales wrapped up in that coprolite. That's the color too, the coloration of the coprolites. A really good handful of the shark coprolites, the high bodent shark coprolites. It had a spiraled intestine and therefore those coprolites are quite convoluted. Fossil oyster shells from the marine sediments and they were referred to with myth and legend called devil's toenails. A gastropod fossil, that marine shell there from the Jurassic period. A crinoid fossil specimen, a specimen there of sea lily stem. And you can see the edge there, that's what you're looking for sticking out of the mudslides at times. The edges have that whitish nature. Calcite ammonite finds and some too with a lovely coloration left on the outside of the shell. Got some conal structure in beef rock and the fibrous calcium carbonate sometimes has the nice ammonite biscuits in the rock. So monkey puzzle tree you find out along the Jurassic coast. This is a very light piece of petrified wood and you sometimes find branches of that with cones on. A fossil sea urchin, a fossil micrasta heart-shaped sea urchin that you get along the Jurassic coast. And I've just dropped a fossil sponge there from the Cretaceous period. It would have sat up on the reef like so. And in the background, you've been seeing some of the fossils 
Arneosteros ammonites and Promicrocerus ammonites from the marine sediments formed in the limestone rocks. You get some nice fossils there, particularly well-preserved ones from the Jurassic. You must register key scientifically important fossils at the Charmouth Heritage Centre where the scientific community are able to study your finds for a period of six months to further the cause of science. A lot of amateurs and professional fossil hunters have made finds along the Jurassic Coast at low tide that have ended up as valuable museum assets. There is a fossil collecting code of conduct in operation along the Jurassic Coast. You can see that online. Look up West Dorset fossil collecting code of conduct you can save the little fossils from the destruction of the sea at low tide. You must not dig in the cliffs in situ. Beware of the dangerous cliffs, they are liable to fall suddenly and without warning. Beware of the dangerous cliffs along the Jurassic coast. Here are all the different plethora of ammonites that you can find, all the different species of ammonite that you can spot along the Jurassic coast if you're lucky at low tide. And like I said, Beware of the dangerous cliffs, they're liable to fall suddenly without warning. Any chance to get out my plastic model of the ammonite, showing the morphology of that sea creature. Well, I'm constantly asked what a rare find is along the Jurassic coast, and a really good Nautilus fossil find like this, that's not too eroded, is a very nice find to make at low tide along the Jurassic coast. And also too, this specimen here, you can see a really nice big chunky Nautilus fossil find that I made here. You can see the sea hasn't eroded it too badly at all and look at the light nicely reflecting off that surface of that large Nautilus fossil find. And also to the agatized and silicified fossil wood. This petrified wood from the Cretaceous period is found in the chert beds at times. It's much rarer to find than a lot of the other Jurassic fossilized wood. And you can see also too the lovely coloration there on that petrified wood with the Torito borings where they're filled with lime bay agate. So that's a mention of the rarer fossil finds to make. And here is the balamnite, which I showed you earlier, the guard of the sea creature, the balamnite. Those aren't rare and they're great fossil finds, a great starter find to make at low tide. Lots of people get the balamnite fossils and it's a nice fossil to find. Also too, in the thin grey layered limestone rocks like this, these open up along a line of weakness, which is the fossil hopefully inside that you'll spring out when you tap these layered limestone rocks. There's the impression one side, the whole ammonite the other side. If you'd like to see my fossil hunting video called 10 fossil hunting mistakes. You'll see all about how to find these right rocks on the beach at low tide.